this girl's friend who's super cool, but sometimes she gets annoying. When we hang out, it starts out good, but in the end, we always seem to argue about palindromes. It's annoying. We're constantly going back and forth. Did you like that dad joke? I don't have friend problems. It was just a funny, just a little knee slapper, ha ha ha. Uh, but in case you didn't get the joke, a palindrome is a word or a number that is the same in reverse as it is going forward. So take for instance, the word mom, like mom up there in heaven. Sadly, that's not where she is. She's actually down below where it's extremely burning hot in a place called Florida. Almost got you. Hi, mom. Okay, as you can see, just by looking at the word, it's really hard to tell if it's reversed, like say in a program, you know? I mean, if you're not getting an error, you really don't know if it's truly reversed. Hence the solution needing to be a bool returning true or false. Uh, a, good a good tip to test the reversal in a program you've written is just to take a random word or number such as one, two, three, four, and just see if it reverses. Um, but that's just for your own knowledge since the problem is wanting you to return a true or false. Um, sorry, I'm a hand talker. So that's why you're, my hands are always going crazy. Uh, but here's an important point. Uh, lead codes instructions Encourage us to try to solve the problem without converting it into a string. Which, if you do this, it can be solved pretty much just with one line using slicing. And, I mean, come on, that's just way too easy. What's funny is everyone's so proud of solving it efficiently, and yet they're converting it into a string. Um, I guess I won't tell if you won't tell. What we're going to do today is look at recursion, while loops. I don't think I can get away from my extreme love of while loops for this problem. Um, that's sarcasm, by the way. Um, we're also gonna look at the div mod and the math module. And just for craps and giggles, we're going to quickly look at a little pip install called is underscore palindrome. And I'm going to share a little secret with you. I don't know, maybe it's not a secret, but it feels that way to me. And then lastly, if you're ever uh, asked to solve this problem using regular expressions, feel free to tell them to take a long walk off of a short pier. The entirety of this video is going to avoid any mention of string conversion per lead codes instructions. We'll only be dealing with integers or numbers for this tutorial, laying it on the foundation of the base 10 number system. I'm sure you're all aware of what that is if you've passed the fifth grade, but just in case you're not familiar with it, I've created a little infographic to the left that you can check out. Sticking with our one, two, three, four number example for now, you can see that our one is in the ones place, our two is in the tens place, and our three is in the hundreds place, and so on and so forth. For our first example, an efficient solution could be conducted using recursion that implements this principle, as do most solutions that I've seen. What we're going to do is tell our program to take our numbers from their respective place in the decimal system and then place them into a variable going from right to left. Then we'll match our original number to our created variable that contains our numbers in reverse. And that's it. That's not so bad, right? Now remember as a side point, a negative number in reverse puts our dash at the end of the number. And that means that a number like that or anything less than or equal to 10 cannot be a palindrome. But I think we have right now everything we need to write our program. So let's get pumped up and go code. <laughs> to start writing our function, we need to start with creating our two variables. Uh, one for our future reverse, 
which is going to start out at zero for now. And then we need to create a copy of our number that we're going to compare it to at the end. So we'll just call it num, our number num. Um, that's actually going to be x. Let me unhashtag this so this doesn't cause problems later on and I don't know what's going on. Oh yes, because the function call is hashtagged. Brilliant, okay. Um, next one is we're going to write while our num does not equal zero, like a countdown. Let's not create an infinity loop or an infinity while loop. Let's not do that today, okay? Uh, so let's create our remainder, which is going to be called remainder equals our num modulo 10. Of course, everything is 10 because we're basing this again on the base 10 number system. So we create our remainder. And then to create or to start building our reverse, we're going to... Uh, call itself. We're going to call itself. This is where the recursion comes in. Now reverse. We're going to multiply by 10 and then add our remainder back on. And then we got to convert our num to an integer because it produces a float. So we're going to integer num. We're going to divide by 10. And all that's left to do is create an if statement. At this point, we're just comparing the two numbers to see if if it's a, if it's reversed. So if x equals our reverse number, we want to return true. If it's not, we want to return false. Let's test it out, shall we? Let's print our solution of, let's do one, two, three, four, because that way we know we're going to get a false. So let's do that first. You know me, I'm always doing things backwards. If you haven't watched my videos in a while, you know I do things backwards. I don't know why. It just seems better. Okay, we have a false. Yay! Let's do an actual palindrome number of one, two, one. True! It works. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's move on to our second example. Our next method is very, very similar, uh, but it uses the built-in div mod. And th with this, we can shorten our code by about four or five lines. And that's always good, right? Uh, the div mod sort of kills two birds with one stone. Um, it takes our num as the first argument, and then the 10 is the divisor. And that provides us with a tuple that includes our remainder. And as it iterates down, it pulls our last number off and goes down, down, down until there just there isn't any more. And then our next variable does pretty much the same thing as it did in the last function, which creates our reverse. And when we run our solution, we get a pretty quick return, at least in PyCharm. But watch what happens when we test it in leak code. A few minutes later. Dang. That's pretty nice code too. I mean it works in it works in PyCharm, it works in a program, but it's just not fast enough for leak code. And I don't know why they're being so snooty about it. I'm kidding. It most likely has to do with the outlying test cases, I'm sure. Hey there! If you made it this far and enjoy what you're seeing, why not subscribe? I upload fresh content all the time. Thanks for watching. Our next example was not written by me at all. Nor do I understand logarithms or calculus very well. And yes, if you read my blog, you know what a pet peeve it is of mine when people do tutorials and they can't explain how the code works. However, this is literally like one line of code and it, and it is not very readable, but it does work. So, okay, it's not one line, it's, it's, two, it's two functions and each function is a one line. And I'm not even gonna type it all out. It demands a cut and paste and I'm just going to post it here and stare in amazement at it. Like who, does this who who are you that's how what i want to know obviously you have to know logarithms and calculus and all that 
wonderful stuff. Um, it works in PyCharm, but again, this doesn't fly in lead code either. And I'm really not trying to give you bunk codes, but <laughs> they do work in PyCharm. They just don't work for elite code, but they're still cool. Like who doesn't want to look at this stuff? I know I do. I don't know. Maybe you can build off of these codes and make them work somehow. I don't know. That's beyond me a little bit. I mean, anyway, I just thought it was super cool and I'm super proud of anyone who can do this. So kudos to you. It's awesome. In closing, I quickly want to share a little pip install uh, function called is underscore palindrome. It's just a cute, it's a cute little pip install. I don't know why that always sounds so cute to me, but anyway, it's the pip, but um, it's just a little program that you can install and it's an, it just, it's is palindrome. You type in, is this a palindrome and it comes back true or false. I suppose it's really handy if you have a very large number or bytes or whatever and you need to know if it's a palindrome and this should return it really quickly without even having to write a program so i think that's pretty neat anyway just wanted to throw that in there and show that to you guys what do you think about this problem did you have issues what methods did you use what did you find faster or slower i'd love to hear from you so feel free to just comment down below thank you again for joining me until next time happy coding see you later friends bye